If you're going to climb an extremely dangerous mountain, then you'll need to make all the right decisions. The consequences of a mistake is an unpleasant death in the frozen wastes. Insurmountable captures a nerve-wracking climb with its roguelike mechanics, with turn-based combat and a steady drain on all your resources. I mean, the theme fits pretty well. The mountain is trying to kill you, much like many roguelike games are. The goal is to climb three different mountains in a row, with each being a little more difficult than the previous one, especially since finishing one gives you a debuff. Keep in mind, reaching the summit isn't the end of the level. It's obvious when I say it out loud, but I was using game logic and thought I would magically be whisked away. No, you need to save resources for the climb back down. While the terrain is less dangerous, you've already expended so many resources that it still makes the climb down a challenge. You might have to put it all on the line crossing dangerous spaces with one of your bars completely empty. The climb up has all kinds of different height blocks, terrains, and points of interest. As the mountain gets steeper, it requires more energy, and some of those spaces are more treacherous than others, which might cause an event to happen. They're never good, and it's a test of luck if you'll pass unscathed. You can choose which tile to move to from pretty far away, and the game will auto-path, but it's not always the best route you'll want to take. You might consider taking a longer path over less dangerous terrain, and the game allows you to queue up the path you want to take, and you can even stop if you change your mind. Now, as I said, climbing up larger tiles takes more energy, a resource you'll want to conserve. Your body temperature also decreases. It is a cold mountain after all. You can sleep in a cave or pitch your tent, which is a limited resource, but the game isn't over if you run out of one of your resources. You do need to carefully manage these bars, going as far as to trade one for another. For example, there are plenty of times you need to trade body heat to search for an item. Maybe you'll find it, well, maybe you won't, and hopefully there's a way you can get the resource back later. You are forced to get items since you don't start with any oxygen and you're going to need it once you reach the death zone the altitude where it becomes more difficult to breathe. It's the most stressful part because it's the resource I can never find enough of. My fault for not scouring the entire map, and the way down is even more stressful because I used all my oxygen to get up to the top. You must hit as many points of interest on the way up as you can. Most of them are useful, but there are a few where you need to make a decision, and the outcome isn't always what you want. Still, I find them more useful than not. Anyway, before you start ascending, you'll need to choose your character. They all play a little differently since their active skills differ. I'm not even sure it matters which character you choose, and I consider it more about variety than anything else. You will be gaining skills as you go through each level you reach. There are active and passive skills to choose from. After that, you'll need to choose which route you're going to take up the mountain. You're shown three different choices, and each one has a positive and negative aspect to them. For example, one route might have more points of interest, but rougher terrain. It's another way the game allows you to make each run varied. Oh, hey, side note, if you're concerned about game speed, then I should let you know this is as fast as the game gets. All this was recorded with the speedier setting turned on. It's a nice feature to have, and I, I didn't find it too slow. Overall, Insurmountable is pretty good. I was breaking into a sweat as I made some of the decisions. I was fretting about overspending resources and taking risks to make it to the top. It's seriously stressful. Now, I've never played the Mount Everest board game, but Insurmountable sure feels like it would be similar to it. I do recommend Insurmountable for a slower roguelike, and there is room for the game to grow if the developers choose to do so, which is exciting. But if you're into this video, you should absolutely subscribe to help me out. Thank you so much and thanks for watching.